fucking bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches. Help keep our channel ad free by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with a little blast from the past. Of course, this is our normal 40K flashback retro kind of corner, our weekly segment here on the Spiky Mitts YouTube network, right? So this is a flyer for ArmorCast, which was the predecessor, I guess, basically, to Forge World. Now, it didn't have anything to do with Games Workshop. They were strictly a licensee for Games Workshop. But the, what they did was they produced the big stuff. And they were the first guys to do it. Then along came Tony Cottrell. He was like, yo, guys, I can do this. We can make this company called Forge World. And then the license was revoked. And we know the rest of the story from there. But for a good, like, you know, eight years or so, ArmorCast was you know the 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 the, the big uh, the big swinger on the scene when it came to you know the big stuff out there so it was really cool to see and these kits were in stores like stores had them on you know on the shelves like you could buy a warhound titan right off the shelf it came in a box i want to say it was sixty dollars back in the day um i could never afford it <laughs> so i didn't i don't really 100 percent remember um you know high school's rough <laughs> High school super expensive guys can't be can't be buying uh, warlord war, warhound titans and such. You got to be uh, you know paying for gas money and uh, uh, trying to buy beer, right? So <laughs> um, you know it was it was a magical time to see all this big stuff and you know to play in some of the bigger games. The rules weren't exactly worked out as well as they could have been, you know, when we see all the Ar imperial armor rule sets and things like that today. But Armorcast was the first one to do it. This was their flyer, and it came in a box, so you could be like, hey, I guess they figured if you bought one of these, you, chances are you're going to buy more. Now, this was the dawn of, you know, the internet age, basically. Like, emails were starting to come out. You'll notice that there is an email on here at edu because, you know, colleges were the first ones to kind of uh, start promoting the, the whole internet email and, and things like that, and we still see that today. Obviously, they're at the forefront of a lot of research and things. Um, so the ArmorCast team... Um, I don't really know these guys. I, I, I've never really interacted with them. I just have going off the flyer here with these two gentlemen right here, uh, Tim and David out in California. And I guess it, they were the guys that basically made ArmorCast. Now, ArmorCast still exists today. They do smaller stuff. I think they sold off the company to some other folks, and they're at Adepticon every every so often. I see them there, and um, I, but I don't think it's the same folks. But this kind of gives you an idea. Now, another thing that was interesting about these Titans was that they were put together with nuts and bolts, like hex bolts and like washers and stuff like when you took the top off this warhound titan it was actually you know you had a bolted together literally um now there's a lot of fakes out there on the market because these things were easily recastable being the size and you know only five or six pieces that they were so if you see a copy out there with a lot of bubbles and things in it, chances are it's probably a fake. They actually did a pretty good job with these things, and it was this really rich yellow resin that, I, and I've unboxed some of my old Tyranid ones on here uh, that I had picked up secondhand from back in the day. I don't have them anymore, but you know, check those videos too to get a better visual about what I'm talking about. So here was the Imperial Warhound Titan, which is a lot different. You can tell where it gets its Warhound kind of look from these days, but it's a lot different than what we see you know with the Lucius class or the you know the Mars Alpha uh, class patterns that that are out today and then the Imperial Reaver now all this stuff was based off the uh, first of all the Space Marine game which became epic Space Marine which became epic I believe and then so on and so forth moving on down the line of course I think Adeptus Titanicus pre uh, predated all of that as a box game you know so the games workshop did a lot of box games at first and then they worked into the blister series and the whole lines on shelves and these were the bigger versions so people would see the smaller versions of these that you could get in a blister or a smaller box set and be like yo I want the bigger 28 millimeter scale let me get that right so here's the Reaver Titan now again it looks very similar to what we've seen today of course, the predecessor to the Baneblade Shadow Sword. This was a combo kit, a lot smaller than the plastic kit that we have today. I actually owned one of these um, 
right around the 2000s or so I had a actually put a down payment on a car so I had to sell off a lot of stuff unfortunately and that was one of the things to go but um, you know I miss him but they eventually came out with the plastic forge or the plastic kits from games workshop a few years later so hey I uh, picked up a few of those and I was happy again yay but you can see here that they are priced $50 um, a single main blade, single shadow sword, or you could get the multi kit for 70. So that was really cool on them. Actually, now there's prices on these. Oh, they didn't have the tight. Oh, yeah, they did. It was 80. Oh, wow. It was $80. Yeah, I definitely wasn't buying that back in the early 90s. Now, remember, this was like, you know, this was second edition 40K. This was like, you know, 93, 94, 95 ish, right around the time the internet was popping. Um, so, you know, this was. Uh, this was literally like 20, 21 years ago, give or take, depending on how you know how you date this stuff. Then there was some Eldar stuff. Some of the folks out there might not have seen the uh, the original Eldar Tempest Grav Tank, which of course, kind of um, depending on how you look at it, either turned into the Falcon or they turned it into the bigger versions, the Scorpion and things like that. Don't really know, um, but that was the a lot of people used that as a Falcon back in the day. And then the Revenant Scout Titan, which. Um, you know, it looks pretty true to what we see today, but obviously it's, you know, the beginnings and very rudimentary stuff that was sculpted by hand. Now they do everything, you know, they still sculpt it by hand, but they have a little bit better advanced techniques out there in Nottingham, right? Um, on the next page, we've got the Eldar Towering Destroyer Knight, which I think we can all agree has turned into the, uh, you know, the Knight itself, the Wraith Knight, uh, Titan, whatever you want to call it, gargantuan creature. So this was a little guy. He was only about you know that big or so about the size of a wraith knight these days and uh that's you know maybe where they got the inspiration for the wraith knight of course you know reaching back like they do and picking up a lot of stuff out of the past and then the phantom titan as well and this phantom titan actually is bigger than the current one from forge World. i've seen them up close um compared the two together and this one's actually bigger but again it's not you know it's put together with nuts and bolts sculpted by hand in the 90s not as um i want to say elegant as the current Eldar one, um, you know, the Eldar Phantom Titan, obviously uh, for $165 as opposed to roughly $1,000 <laughs> that you would pay for the Phantom Titan nowadays. Um, it, you know, there is a little difference there. So it's kind of like preference. Do you like the retro look or do you like the new, the sleek aerodynamic um, kind of elegant look for the, for the one? And there is a price tag difference. I mean, I'm sure these go for at least double on eBay. I would imagine these days. I'm sure they're competing with the Forge World ones. But, you know, it's just kind of cool to see. And there was actually, a, they did a different head variant that was a uh, Warsaw your head and it was all they did was they just put out a different head and it had all the gemstones and all the crazy like you know uh the, the ghost helm kind of look but for a, a a phantom titan which was really dope i actually dug that one and i was like man i never had it i always kind of wanted it but now i'm kind of glad i'd like to see forger will do a different variant that would be neat to see you know if they ever go back and do another eldar supplement the orc battle wagon now this is a really interesting thing um i actually preferred this orc battle wagon i had a couple of these back in the day they're still kicking around out there you can find them i prefer them to the plastic versions i think i think for orcs they're they're very well detailed and they're right about the same size of what the battle wagon should be and not that little thin box car thing that they've put out um you know with the plastic kit and then the orc great gargant was one of the most expensive kits of the time from them i couldn't even imagine what uh, gw would sell something like this for but this thing is big it's really really big it's on par with the same size as this phantom titan you know maybe up to the head and it's just like it's like a layer cake it's just multiple layers of like howled out job of the hut resin you know just like this big like raw raw, raw raw and you just stack it all together and then you bolt in the arms and then it just like swivels and like does this whole thing and you can kind of pick it up and move it because the the layer cakes kind of stack together and it's just a really cool thing i played against one of these many years ago and it was just it was just fun to see on the tabletop all painted up and you know just towers over anything out there except for maybe like the warlord titan these days i feel like and then the exocrine and the malfactor i've done an unboxing of these i actually had these for for several years in the past you can check that out on the channel here and then resin model care painting tips stuff like that obviously you know they give you lots of tips from back in the day there was you know no internet there was no hobby sites there was no blogs like you had to buy books you had to buy magazines you had to bribe you know the venerable old guy in the game store with the chinese buffet to teach you the magical thing called dry brushing holy cow wait dry brushing that's a real thing yes it's a real thing oh my god my life changed <laughs> so much i couldn't even believe it 
And then you got your rudimentary mail order catalog on the back here. Yes, this is how we used to order things in the 90s. <laughs> we didn't have the internet. We didn't push button like, I want to hear the next day Amazon Prime me. Nope, we had to fill out this shit. And then we had to put money or a money order in there. I know, you had to go to the store. It's crazy. This is like a whole process to order shit. And then, <laughs> and then you had to send it off. Uh, and then maybe, you know, maybe a week later, maybe a month later, you get your shit in the mail. Maybe there was no tracking. <laughs> There was, no, there was no anything. It was the 90s. It came or it didn't. And you're just like, I'm sad. It didn't come. But, or then, you know, like a year later it came. You just never knew. But, you know, that was that was the 90s and the 80s for you. It's, you know, straight up mail order. It's crazy. It, it's crazy just in 20 years how far technology and how far society has has really come. I, I mean, I'm, I could talk for hours about all that. Like, everybody's always on their phones and such. But anyways, uh, hopefully reading spikybits.com, of course. But... Um, you know, that being said, this was a this was a cool little flyer I found. You know, it came in one of my boxes. I don't know which one, but I kept it. I just stumble across stuff all the time, and it was a really neat little uh, you know kind of blast from the past here that I was really digging. So I hope you enjoyed my armor cast catalog blast from the past here on Spiky Bits. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on the longward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.